Today we're going to cover the brewing process that we use here at Bernie Brewery. The grain arrives to us in 50 pound sacks. For freshness sake, the grain arrives unmilled. So our very first step is to mill the grain. This milling process you can consider to be a lot like eating pistachios, where you take the shell and break it open, leaving it as whole as possible to gain access to the endosperm or meat on the inside. It is in this endosperm or meat that complex carbohydrates are held. We're going to use both of these pieces, both the endosperm and the shell, to create our wort, which is our sugary water mix. After going through the mill, the grain is taken by a flexible auger system from underneath the mill to a grain hopper or grist case, which is situated above the mash louder tongue. It sits there in holding until the brewer is ready. When the brewer is ready, the grain is dropped from the hopper into the mash tun where it mixes with hot water. It is this mix or mash that is held for an hour and during this process the complex carbohydrate chains that were held in the endosperm are converted into simple sugars. Once this conversion of simple sugars is complete, the liquid that is held in the mash tun is now called wort. The only step left to do is for the wort to run clear before we can transfer it to the boil kettle. We do that by taking the wort from the bottom of the mash tun and recirculating it around to the top. It then has to make its way through the grain bed which is filled with the shell or the husk and they are stacked one on top of the other and they serve as a filter. The debris that was held in the wort is then trapped in that grain bed. When the brewer is satisfied that the wort is running as clear as he would like, then the transfer begins into the boil kettle. As this transfer is going on from the mash tun to the boil kettle, additional water is added to the mash tun. This is done by sprinkling the hot water on top of the grain bed and it rinses through the grain bed. This rinsing process is called sparging. And we continue to do this until we get up to our boil volume. When we get to that boil volume, then we begin the boiling process in the boil kettle. The wort is boiled for 60 minutes in the boil kettle, and that is for three primary reasons. The first reason is to reduce the water content in the wort. This effectively increases the sugar content in the wort. The second reason is to sanitize the wort and all of its contents. And the third and probably most important reason is this is when we add our hops. We add hops at three different stages during the boil. Those that are added at the very beginning of the boil are there to add bitterness to the beer. Those that we add midway through the boil are added for flavor. And those that are added at the very end of the boil, those are added for aroma purposes. At the end of the boil, what we need to do now is remove the hop debris and other debris from the wort. We do this by whirlpooling the liquid. We draw from the bottom of the boil kettle and push it with a pump through a pipe that is tangential to the boil kettle. This forces the liquid and all of its contents to spin just like a whirlpool would. So once the debris has collected in the center of the boil kettle, the wort is ready to be transferred over to the fermenter. To get there, it must pass through a heat exchanger. That heat exchanger's sole job is to reduce the temperature of the wort from boiling down to approximately 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The wort must be at 70 degrees because the yeast want to have a Thanksgiving feast. The whole idea there is for the yeast to consume the simple sugars that we created in the wort as quickly as possible. This consumption of simple sugars continues for about two weeks. Once all those simple sugars have been consumed by the yeast, we then want to send the yeast into hibernation or dormancy as quickly as we can. We do that by reducing the temperature to 35 degrees. That gets all of the yeast to pack down to the bottom of the fermenter into the cone. The cone of the fermenter is there so that we can collect all of the yeast in as small a volume as possible. And that leaves us with clear beer up above. Once we have the clear beer on top of the yeast cake, we transfer it over into the bright tank. Once it's in the bright tank, we continue to hold the temperature at 35 degrees. We do that to help us keep the CO2 that we push into it in solution. 
we push the CO2 into the beer by way of a carbonating stone. The carbonating stone is very similar to an oxygenating stone that most folks have in an aquarium, which is only about that big. Our carbonating stone is just a little bit bigger. So after carbonating, we hold the beer in the bright tank for about a day and a half. At that point, we're ready for packaging. For packaging, we will again take beer from near the bottom of the tank and push it into either a keg for the draft system or bottles. The bottling process begins with empty unlabeled bottles being loaded onto a conveyor. The conveyor leads the bottles to a wrap station where a label is applied. The bottles are then collected 24 at a time, inverted, washed, rinsed, and set ready for the filler. The fill station fills six bottles at a time and then advances them where they are capped six at a time. Once capped, the bottles are rinsed and advanced out of the bottling line. They are then packaged into case boxes, loaded onto a pallet, and moved into our cold room where they are ready for delivery. Now go get some.